Okay, we're back digging into trusted infrastructure with Parasar Kodati. He's a senior consultant for product marketing and storage at Dell Technologies. Parasar, welcome to theCUBE, good to see you. Great to be with you, Dave. Yeah, coming from Hyderabad, awesome. Uh, so I really appreciate you uh, coming on the program. Let's start with talking about your point of view on what cybersecurity resilience means to, to Dell generally, but storage specifically. Yeah, so for something like storage, you know, we are talking about the data layer, Dave. And if you look at cybersecurity, it's all about securing your uh, data applications and infrastructure. And it has been a very mature field at the network and the application layers. And there are a lot of great technologies, right? From, you know, enabling zero trust, uh, advanced authentications, uh, identity management systems, and so on. And, and in fact, you know, with the advent of, you know, the, the use of artificial intelligence and machine learning, really these detection tools for cybersecurity have really evolved in the network and the application spaces. So for storage, what it means is how can you bring them to the data layer, right? How can you bring, you know, the principles of uh, zero trust to the data layer? Uh, how can you leverage artificial intelligence and machine learning to look at, you know, access patterns and make intelligent decisions about maybe an indicator of uh, a compromise and identify them ahead of time, just like, you know, how it's happening at other layers of, um, of, of applications. And when it comes to cyber resilience, it's, it's basically a strategy which assumes that a threat is imminent and it's a good assumption with, with the severity and the frequency of the attacks that are happening. And the question is, how do we fortify the infrastructure, in this rich infrastructure, to withstand those attacks and have a plan, a response plan where we can recover the data and make sure the business continuity is not affected. So that's uh, really cybersecurity and cyber resiliency at, at storage layer. And of course, there are technologies like, you know, um, uh, and network isolation, um, immutability and all these principles need to be applied at the storage level as well. Let me have a follow up on that, if I may. The intelligence that you talked about, that AI and machine learning, is that, do you, do you build that into the infrastructure or is that sort of a separate software module that, that points at various you know, infrastructure components? How, how does that work? Both, Dave. Um, right at the data storage level, um, we have come with various data characteristics. Depending on the nature of data, we developed a lot of signals to see what could be a good indicator of a compromise. Um, and there are also additional applications like Cloud IQ is the best example, which is like an infrastructure-wide health monitoring system for Dell infrastructure. And now we have elevated that uh, to include cybersecurity as well. So these signals are being gathered at Cloud IQ level and other applications as well, so that we can make those decisions about compromise. And we can either cascade that intelligence and alert stream upstream for uh, security teams um, so that they can take actions in platforms like sign systems, XDR systems, and so on. But when it comes to which layer the intelligence is, it has to be at every layer where it makes sense, where we have the information to make a decision. And being closest to the data, we have, uh, we are basically monitoring, you know, the various patterns of data access, who is accessing, um, are they crossing across any geofencing, uh, is there any mass deletion that is happening or a mass encryption that is happening, and we are able to uh, detect uh, those uh, patterns and flag them as indicators of compromise and, and allowing automated response, manual control, and so on for IT teams. Yeah, thank you for that explanation. So at Dell Technologies World, we were there in May. It was one of the first you know, live shows that, that we did in the spring, certainly one of yes. the largest. And I interviewed Ch Shannon Champion and my huge takeaway from the storage side was the degree to which you guys uh, emphasized security uh, within the operating systems. I mean, it really, I mean, PowerMax, more than half, I think of the features were security related, but also the rest of the portfolio. So can you talk about the, the security aspects of the Dell storage portfolio specifically? Yeah, yeah. So when it comes to data security and broadly data availability, right in the context of cyber resiliency, um, Dell storage, uh, this, you know, these elements have been at the core of our 
um, a core strength for the portfolio and, and a source of differentiation for the storage portfolio. You know, with almost decades of collective experience of building highly resilient architectures for mission critical data, something like PowerMax system, which is the most secure storage platform for high-end enterprises. Um, and now with the increased focus on cybersecurity, we are extending those core technologies of high availability and adding modern detection systems, modern data isolation techniques to offer a comprehensive solution to the customer so that they don't have to piece together multiple things to ensure data security or data resiliency, but a well-designed and well-architected solution by design is uh, delivered to them uh, to ensure uh, cyber protection at the data layer. Got it. Um, you know, we were talking earlier to Steve Keniston and Pete Gear uh, about this notion of Dell trusted infrastructure. How does storage fit into that as a component of that sort of overall, you know, theme. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and so, you know, let me, and let me say this, if, if you, you could address this, because a lot of people might be skeptical that I can actually have security and at the same time, not constrict my organizational agility. That's all, you know, not an or, it's an and. How, how do you actually do that? If you could address both of those, that would be great. Definitely. So for Dell Trusted Infrastructure, cyber resiliency is a key component of that. And just as I mentioned, you know, uh, air gap isolation, it really started with, you know, power protect cyber recovery. You know, that was a solution more than three years ago we launched, and that was first in the industry, which paved way to, you know, kind of data isolation being a core element of data management and uh, you know, for, for uh, data infrastructure. And since then we have implemented these technologies within different storage platforms as well. So the customers have the flexibility, depending on their data landscape, they can approach, they can do the right data isolation architecture, right? Either natively from the storage platform or consolidate things into the backup platform and isolate from there. And, and the other key thing we, we focus in trusted infrastructure, Dell infra, uh, Dell Trusted Infrastructure is, you know, the goal of simplifying security for the customers. So one good example here is, uh, you know, being able to respond to these cyber threats or indicators of compromise is one thing, but an IT security team may not be looking at uh, the dashboard of the storage systems constantly, right? Uh, storage administration uh, admins may be looking at it. So how can we build this intelligence and provide this upstream platforms so that they have a single pane of glass to understand security landscape across applications, across networks, firewalls, as well as storage infrastructure and, and compute infrastructure. So that's one of the key ways where how we are helping simplify the um, kind of the ability to uh, respond, ability to detect and respond to these threats uh, in real time uh, for security teams. And you mentioned, you know, about zero trust and how it's a balance of, you know, not uh, kind of restricting users or put heavy burden on, you know, multi-factor authentication and so on. And this really starts with, you know, what we are doing is provide all the tools, you know, when it comes to advanced authentication, uh, supporting external identity management systems, multi-factor authentication, encryption, all these things are intrinsically built into these platforms. Now the question is, the customers are actually, one of the key steps is to identify uh, what are the most critical parts of uh, uh, their business or what are the applications uh, that the most critical uh, business operations depend on and similarly identify uh, mission critical data where part of your response plan, where it cannot be compromised, where you need to have a way to recover. Once you do this identification, then the level of security can be really determined uh, by, uh, by the security teams, by the infrastructure teams. And you know, another you know, intelligence that gives a lot of flexibility uh, for, for even developers to do this is, today we have APIs um, that so you can not only track these alerts at the data infrastructure level, but you can use our APIs to take concrete actions like blocking a certain user or increasing the level of authentication based on the threat level 
that has been perceived uh, at the application layer or at the network layer. So there is a lot of flexibility that is built into this by design so that depending on the criticality of the data, criticality of the application, number of users affected, these decisions have to be made from time to time. And it's, as you mentioned, it's, it's a balance, right? And sometimes, you know, if, if an organization had a recent attack, you know, the, the level of awareness is very high uh, against cyber attacks. So for, for a time, you know, these, these settings may be a bit difficult to deal with, but then it's, it's a decision uh, that has to be made by security teams as well. Got it. So you're surfacing what may be hidden KPIs that are you know, buried inside, for instance, the storage system through APIs up, upstream into a dashboard so that somebody can, you know, dig into the storage tunnel, extract that data, and then somehow, you know, populate that dashboard. You're saying you're automating that, that, that workflow. That's a great example and you may have others, but is that the correct understanding? Absolutely, and it's a two-way integration. Let's say a detect a, an attack has been detected at a completely different layer, right? In the application layer or at a firewall, we can respond to those as well. So it's a two-way integration. We can cascade things up as well as uh, respond to uh, threats that have been detected elsewhere um, uh, through the API. That's great, all right, and hey. Zero trust API for power scale is, is the best example for that. Uh, excellent, uh, so thank you, appreciate that. Get, get Give us the last word, put a bow on this and, and, and bring this segment home, please. Absolutely. So at Dell, uh, uh, storage portfolio um, using advanced data isolation um, with air gap, uh, having machine learning based algorithms to detect uh, indicators of compromise and having recovery mechanisms um, with granular snapshots, being able to recover data and restore applications to maintain business continuity uh, is what we deliver to customers. Uh, and these are areas where a lot of innovation is happening, a lot of product focus, as well as, you know, if you look at the professional services, all the way from engineering to professional services, the way we build these systems, the way we, we configure and architect these systems, um, cyber security and protection uh, is a key focus uh, for all these activities. And dell.com slash securities uh, is where you can uh, learn a lot about these initiatives. That's great, thank you. You know, at the recent uh, Reinforce uh, event in, in Boston, we heard a lot uh, from AWS about, you know, detection and response and DevOps and machine learning and some really cool stuff. We heard a little bit about ransomware, but I'm glad you brought up air gaps because we heard virtually nothing in the keynotes about air gaps. That's an example of where, you know, the, the CISO has to pick up from where the cloud leaves off as I was in front. Um, and so number one and number two, we didn't hear a ton about how the cloud is making the life of the CISO simpler. And that's really, uh, my takeaway is, is in part anyway, your job and companies like Dell. So Paris, I really appreciate the insights. Thank you for coming on theCUBE. Thank you very much, Dave. It's always great to be in these uh, conversations. All right, keep it right there. We'll be right back with Rob Emsley to talk about data protection strategies and what's in the Dell portfolio. You're watching theCUBE.